When thinking about the finest, most beautifully sculpted miniatures in the world, Battletech would probably not be the first game that springs to mind. I mean, sure, I absolutely love these clunky, chunky PVC boys for all their charm and character. But I don't think, realistically, that they'll be winning any craftsmanship awards anytime soon. Now, when I think of the nicest minis from the games that I play, I'm instantly thinking of Infinity, or maybe the exceptional printable miniatures from One Page Rules, or even the super surprising sleeper War Cradle with their Wild West Exodus sculpts. However, a thing I've noticed that flies under a lot of people's radars, especially if they don't live in the US, seems to be the Battletech Premium Miniatures, limited edition multi-part resin kits released direct from Catalyst. Now, because I'm a lucky boy who has friends in the US, I happen to have got my hands on this very Hammerhead Premium Mini. But I also, at the same time, managed to get this Premium Mad Cat, a mech that I'm a huge fan of. So these representing the very best miniatures Battletech has to offer, I'm going to take you on a journey today, as I try to give one of them the very best paint job I've ever put on a mech. I'm starting out, as I always do, with our Madcap primed up in black. In this case, I've used an airbrush primer from the Army Painter, but you could just as easily prime your minis with a brush and some black paint or even a spray can. Now, this being a Madcap, I feel compelled to paint it up in a cool clan scheme, so we'll be taking inspiration from this Jade Falcon Fire Galaxy scheme as shown in the unit color compendium. And since we already have our blacks covered by the priming process, I'm going to begin by working in the greys. I'll be using intermediate blue here from Viejo and then mixing in some white to create highlights. I'm also going to add a little shading here using the airbrush, just with some thinned down black. Now I'm using the airbrush here because I don't have to be careful due to black being the only other colour on the mini anyway, but you could glaze or wet blend these shadows if you wanted to. However, going back to those highlights, one of the things that I first noticed when I started painting them in is how much crisper the edges are on these miniatures compared to the PVC ones. No surprise, really, due to the upgraded material, but still really nice to see. It definitely makes the process much easier. Next on my list, I want to start tackling the turquoise details and start to work a little finer too, so I can see how the increased detail level is to work with. I'm starting out just by mapping these in with some Viejo model color Emerald, but I will be adding some shading and highlights as well. Normally, when it gets to the point of adding in these kinds of stripes and markings on the PVC Battletech minis, I like to just do them pretty choppy and keep them very simple, kind of ignoring the panel details to a degree. But with the added detail and clearer panels of the premium miniature, it's much easier to put in a more complex or detailed pattern. I even touched in a little glazed shading here with some Viejo game colour Scurvy Green. This gives the colour just a little bit of modulation and keeps it a bit more visually interesting than if it were flat, as well as tying the patterning into the overall shading of the mini. And the highlights for the turquoise areas are again very simple, just mixing a little Viejo model colour Ice Yellow into the turquoise and applying this mostly just as an edge highlight. The gold accents on the mech follow exactly the same process, except this time I'm using Viejo model colour Ochre Brown and then Agrax Earthshade from Citadel and mixes of Ice Yellow for my highlights. The white accents, however, I decided to just paint in pure white. This is mostly just to make them nice and poppy and bright against the greys that are already present on the mech. From there, I need to pivot back to highlighting because now that I know pretty much how much exposed black is going to be left on the miniature, I need to give it some edge highlighting to accent it. I could of course go with greys here, but much like my choices with the white accents, I want a good pop against the existing greys already on the piece. So I'll highlight instead with Viejo Panzer Aces Periscopes. The second highlight after this will just be a mixture of periscopes and white. So with all the accents and highlights done, we're looking pretty good at this point. And I'm definitely noticing that the higher quality cast is enabling me to paint with more detail and precision. I 
can't say this is the finest model I've ever painted. It's still falls short of the quality of my favorites, but it's definitely the best Battletech painting experience I've ever had. So with that in mind, let's press on with the fun. The next thing I wanted to do was get the metallics blocked in with Viejo Metal Color Dark Aluminium, my go-to silver metal. And then I'm gonna shade it down with Nuln Oil. Typically when I do this, I don't tend to highlight metals because I quite like the natural edge sheen of the metallic paint with the shade over it. However, I'm not gonna take that approach here. I'm supposed to be doing my best, so my best I shall try to do. And I will hit these metallics with just a little edge highlight using Viejo Metal Color Duraluminium. Next up is the part that I always um and are about showing on camera because it's kind of just flitting around the model and picking out little details. It would be lots of short clips of short processes and I don't think that's the most entertaining. It's very much dealer's choice here though as we wrap up things like the canopy, the missile pods and any last bits of freehand on the mech. Now I decided not to show everything here but I did think you'd enjoy seeing me work on this canopy design while I talk about this last section. And now the actual last step on this little journey is some basing. I don't think we need anything hugely groundbreaking here, but I do think that a decent bit of basing does a big job of uplifting a paint job. So I'm certainly not gonna phone it in after all this effort. And after all that, we have a finished Mad Cat in my interpretation of the Jade Falcon Fire Galaxy scheme. I hope you enjoyed this one, folks. And if you did, please do remember to give it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel to catch more videos like it. If you want to support the content I create, please do check the description for my Ko-fi and Patreon links too. My Ko-fi even now includes an exclusive set of collector's tiers through which you can own models like this very mech. With all that said, huge thanks to you all for watching and continuing to support the channel. I'll see you in the next one, folks, and bye-bye for now.